بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, and we ask God to send peace and blessings upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad and family and companions. It's not every day that you sit in a mosque in America and you're able to do zikr like this. Trust me, I travel a lot around the U.S. and this is very rare to see. This is beautiful. This is something that we see all over the Muslim world, but in America, it's perceived as somewhat strange. But this is not strange. But the Prophet wasallam mentioned something about the strangers. And he said, Tuba lil ghuraba. He said, glad tidings to the strangers. He said that this tradition, Islam, that we practice, started off as something strange and it will end as something strange. So someone might walk into this room and see that the lights are off and people are saying the same words together over and over and over again. People that you know, they're not too distant from you might think that's strange. Or even family members might look at you and think that's strange. Then I would say glad tidings for all of you. For the Prophet wasallam said that my religion started as something strange and it will end as something strange. But the truth is, what's really strange is the heart that was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all it wants to do is remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are human beings that barely get to taste that reality. But when you do taste that reality, no one can take it away from you after that. Nothing becomes equivalent to that reality. You can go visit whatever you want to visit all over the world, but nothing becomes sweeter than sitting in front of individuals or with individuals, remembering that Allah is our creator. And it's even made more beautiful when you're sitting in front of individuals that are connected to the individuals that are connected to individuals that are connected to individuals to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When that happens, and a whole community is upon that, then the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ is in goodness, bikhair, al-ummah bikhair. Everything that we see around us, everything that we've been witnessing for the past five or six months in terms of what's happening with the Muslim world, or what's happening in Gaza, don't for a second believe into the narrative that this ummah is in something except great hands. This ummah is in great hands. And the best of scholars that I've, you know, for a little bit of time gotten to sit at their feet, they will remind you at every moment, don't say that the community is like this, or the Muslims are like this, or individuals are like this but say that the ummah is in good hands, al ummah bi khair. And it's in khair because of pillars like this and moments like this, where you sit together and you remember Allah's name. We don't know what that means. We don't know what that will do for us. We don't know what that will be for us on the day of judgment. If subhanAllah gives you a tree in the garden, what does it mean when you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout a whole month in which the gates of the garden are open and the gates of hellfire are shut? It means Allah has written for you something very special. But we have to bring ourselves to that frequency of understanding. And how do we bring ourselves to that frequency of openness, we do exactly what the Prophet ﷺ did in these days. The Prophet ﷺ, peace be upon him, was the most generous human being outside of Ramadan. So how about inside of Ramadan, he was more generous, they say, than the giving wind or the breeze. And we all know this when we're very hot sometimes, and then all of a sudden a cool wind comes. What do you do when a cool wind comes and it's very hot? You open your chest to it. You turn your body towards it. 
and you take from it as much as you can. You expand your body. They say the Prophet ﷺ gave more than that generous wind in Ramadan. But what's amazing about the Prophet ﷺ, although he made much worship, and although he prayed much, even outside of Ramadan, and although he was extremely generous even outside of Ramadan, what was amazing about the Prophet ﷺ was that his heart was never in a state that is not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that my eyes would rest, but my heart would be awake. But for us, when we sleep, everything sleeps. How do we get to that station of things becoming awake? And we're not talking about being woke. Huh? We're talking about being awake. The Prophet ﷺ was the mo most woke individual and the most awake individual. And the Prophet's heart never rested. Why? Because he cared about every single human being that ever came after him. So how do you connect yourself to that reality by moments of dhikr like this, where you're feasting in the garden of the Prophet and where you become connected to him. And when your heart is connected to the Prophet then you're connected to the heart that never sleeps. So you can go to sleep peacefully. Knowing that your heart is connected to him. And Afu Ankum, forgive me, I only spoke because of our teachers. Forgive me and stuff.